Hi, everyone. Welcome to CS184, Discussion 3. I'm Ajay, and we'll be talking about geometry and gra graphics, splines, and Bezier curves. For some quick logistics, reminder that Project 1 is due next week on Tuesday. There's one last project party to help you out. That will be on Monday, 2 to 3.30 p.m., both in person and online. You can also come to office hours with project questions, but we will prioritize conceptual questions like clarifying lecture material or talking about advanced graphics concepts in office hours. We'll be talking about geometry, cubic Hermite interpolation, catmull rom interpolation, and Bezier curves. To start with geometry, it's a very relevant topic in graphics, geometry processing, and computer graphics or closely related fields. You can represent geometry in a lot of different ways. Broadly, representations of geometry and scenes fall into two categories, explicit geometric representations and implicit representations. Explicit representations are direct representations of the shape. So these could be points, like on a point cloud on the surface. They could be voxelized grids, which would be a discretized structure. It's shown in 2D here as a 2D discretization of a shape. A circle. We could use polygonal meshes, and in this class and in graphics, triangle and quad meshes are extensively used. These explicit geometric representations are really flexible. You can represent complex geometry by scaling up the size of the data structure. They're easy to sample from. There are some cons, though. It's hard to test whether a point is inside or outside the surface, and doing bookkeeping in the data structure can be complicated. Implicit geometric representations are the points where some function is equal to zero. So that's called the zero level set of the function. And those points define the surface. Generally speaking, uh, an implicit representation of a surface is uh, some function with points satisfying that function or equation relationship. These could be algebraic surfaces, they could be sine distance functions or unsigned distance functions telling you the distance to the surface. It's really easy for some of these representations to test whether a point is inside or outside of the shape. Um, it can be easy to do intersection tests. They can be compact representations of the surface, but they can be hard to sample and sometimes can be difficult to represent complex shapes. Though progress is being made on the research front there. We'll start with cubic Hermite interpolation in a way to represent 2D curves uh, or 1D curves. So in cubic Hermite interpolation, it's a way to smoothly connect some discrete samples. You could naively take some discrete sample shown at the top right and do nearest neighbor interpolation of these samples to get a 1D curve. The problem here is that the curve is not continuous. There's a discontinuity when your nearest sample changes. Linear interpolation is a little better, so the curve is continuous, but the problem here is that the derivative of the curve is not. Cubic Hermite interpolation is a way to interpolate discrete samples with given tangents at the samples that is continuous, but also has continuous der der first derivative. Cubic Hermite interpolation takes as input four points per segment of the curve. So the, the interpolation strategy is how do we interpolate a sample at zero? So given the value of this polynomial P, like the name suggests, this polynomial P is a cubic polynomial. The user provides as input the value of the function at zero, as well as the value of the function at one, H1 here. So these will define two constraints. In addition, the user provides as input to cubic curve by interpolation algorithm um, the first derivative of the polynomial at zero, so the tangent to the curve that's desired at zero, and then the tangent to the curve at one. And as output of this interpolation is a cubic polynomial that will interpolate between these points. You may ask, why is this curve cubic as opposed to quadratic or a higher order? 
the curve needs to be at least cubic because there's four constraints given as input, four inputs, and a cubic polynomial has four degrees of freedom, the constant and then the coefficients. Um, higher degree polynomials might are kind of underdetermined by these constraints. But you could, of course, interpolate the points with the higher order polynomial. Let's do a little bit of math deep dive to understand the interpolation. So we can represent the cubic polynomial with four coefficients, a, b, c, and d, which weight different basis functions, t cubed, t squared, t, and then a constant. So this polynomial is defined in terms of t, which could indicate time, progress along the curve. And then t uh, we can also represent the first derivative of a general polynomial, of the general cubic, just differentiating p of t results in this equation, 3at squared plus 2pt plus c. Plugging in the constraints we are given as input, the values of the function at 0 and 1, and the values of the first derivative, or the tangents at 0 and 1, we can evaluate this first polynomial, p of t, at t equals 0, and that results in just the constant d, p of 1, so t equals 1, and we'll just get the sum of the coefficients, then plug in 0 and 1 again into the first derivative. So plug 0 into this equation, results in the uh, coefficient c, and so on. So now we have four unknowns. Remember, h0 through h3 are given, and we're trying to solve for a, b, c, and d. Try to find the coefficients of a cubic polynomial. To solve for these coefficients a through d, we're just going to copy over these constraint equations we wrote and then put them into matrix form. And the way we're putting them into matrix form is by writing a row vector for the known variables, h0 through h3, and then a row uh, sorry, a column vector, and a column vector for the desired coefficients a through d. These constraints equations then get represented as a matrix. So the first row, if we read it up, 0, 0, 0, 1, would multiply it against this column vector. This vector multiplication will result in the coefficient d, which is the first equation. And then for the second one, it's 1, 1, 1, 1, because we're in the second constraint summing up all of the co coefficients. But this matrix equation allows us to map from coefficients of the polynomial to h0 through h3 when we want to solve the inverse problem. We're given h0 through h3. So as a recap, the first two constraints come from the polynomial, and the second two come from the tangents. In order to solve for the coefficients, we need to move this matrix over to the left side, and this is done by inversion. So let's invert this matrix. Um, you can solve for the inverse for example, by row reduction, so, uh, or use a numerical solver. But in closed form, this is the result of that inversion. Writing that out, we're trying to solve for this polynomial p of t, which is a weighted function of these bases, t cubed, t squared t, and, and the constant one. Plugging in the equation we just derived, matrix equation we just derived for the coefficients, results in this form. So our polynomial is given by a matrix multiply of this fixed matrix against the inputs given by the user and um, these basis functions. But we can rewrite this into a more convenient form involving a single multiplication here, other than these three terms. Reading off the columns of the invert, inverted matrix gives us the coefficient of a different basis. So the basis t, t squared t cubed and one is really simple. It's a basis for cubic polynomials. Instead, we can derive another basis given by these coefficients in the columns, just doing a row, column, multiplication, 
to get a system of four bases. And these are called the cubic Hermite bases polynomials. And the coefficients given by the user, h0 through h3, weight these different bases functions. The Hermite bases functions are shown on the bottom right. On the left are the bases functions for cubic polynomials. And the nice thing about these new bases is that we can directly plug in the constraints given as input as a combination of these bases.